والسلام على اشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وبعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تبارك وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I know that we are waiting for a long time now and uh, I don't need to introduce our lecture to you. Anyhow, uh, we always uh, take the chance if our elder brothers, the scholars or the erudites to come here and we try our best to invite them to come to the mosque to enlighten us in the subjects they are specializing. Uh, you know our uh, brother Ahmad Dida. Uh, I, I can't imagine how he digested the Holy Bible, the Holy Quran, the other literature written about the Christianity and about Judaism and about these subjects related to the religion. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I see him, every time I see him, I look at myself as a child, little child, comparing with his language in the religious matters. Uh, I hope that all of us, inshallah, we will be benefited by what he will lecture us and will listen attentively to him and be benefited by his knowledge. I call upon our brother, Mr. Ahmadina. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أهل الكتاب لا تغلو في دينكم ولا تقولوا على الله إلا الحق إنما المسيح عيسى بن مريم رسول الله وكلمته ألقاها إلى مريم وروح منه فأمنوا بالله ورسوله صدق الله صدق الله المرن الزيم Mr. Chairman and my dear brothers and sisters, the subject, as has been advertised, is Jesus, man, myth, or God. But before we delve into the subject, the atmosphere at the moment in the UK is the atmosphere of the debate that took place on Sunday. People want to know those who have not been there, because we can't expect the whole of Britain to be there, there were about 12,000 people on Sunday. From all over Britain and from the Arab countries and from Africa, they had come. The largest covered hall in Europe was packed to capacity. People want to know what transpired. Those of you that were not there, those of you who were there, can you just put up your hand? I'll have an idea. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. Almost one third of my brothers and sisters were there. But I might share with you certain things that I was not able to share in that meeting, those of you who were there. This might be altogether new to those who were not there. That how the whole thing came about and the response of the Muslims, that the Muslims on this occasion they seem to have been the liveliest of audiences that I have ever addressed. What made them so, so lively? Because usually the Muslims are very placid, quiet, calm. You know, even if it needs, calls for an applause, you will find that they are like straight jacketed. They won't utter a sound and they won't show any signs that they, are, they appreciate a point, generally. But on Sunday it was not so. Now, I have been trying to analyze why all this extra spirit in the Muslim. I may be wrong. You might have better answers than what I'm going to give you this moment. You see, this gentleman happens to be an Arab. There's no doubt about that. He was born an Arab Christian. And he has been boasting that his people have been Christians before Islam. So it's not a conversion from Islam to Christianity. They were Christians and the Muslims came and overtook their lands. 
Most of these Arab countries were Christian lands. Egypt was Christian, Libya was Christian, Morocco was Christian, Syria was Christian, Lebanon was Christian, the whole of Palestine was Christian. When the Muslims came out of the desert fastness and they conquered these territories and the people accepted Islam. So these are the remnants that have been left behind. They are boasting today that there are 14 million Arab Christians, which the Muslim doesn't seem to know, realize. 14 million. In July 1975, he claimed 10 million. On Sunday, he said there are now 14 million. We won't argue with him. We must be on guard. There are 14 million Arab Christians in the Arab world. But this time, he came in the garb of an Arab. Previously, you might have seen, uh, you saw him in the Royal Albert Hall. That's him. That's him. Then, when we had advertised previously his picture as an Arab, he took exception to that. He didn't want to be photographed like this. But this picture we got from his book, The Liberated Palestinian. We got it from here. Among some three million refugees, Palestinian refugees, he is a unique person. This born again Christian, evangelist in America, now an American citizen, he says he is liberated. His people are in hell, but he is in heaven. He is liberated. And the irony of his book is that on the cover, he puts the Israeli star of David. Still, you know, a sting at the heart of any Muslim or Palestinian, the star of David and the uh, Israeli warplanes and the Israeli tanks. And he is liberated. But now, this book, the Muslims hadn't seen this, because this is circulated mostly in America, trying to get sympathy of the American Jews and Christians to finance him in his work. But now, we, when we printed this poster, the man didn't like it. He sent us his photo, taken in a studio, beautiful picture, which was advertised in the Sunday Times magazine section, Sunday Times. You can see nice, clean, shaven, you know, real a westernized Arab. No doubt about that. Now, this is what people expected to see. A westernized man from America coming along and giving battle to the Muslim. But this man came like a wolf in sheep's clothing. He attired himself not only just a, garab, uh, a loose garb, but he put on that I don't know what you call that with that uh, black band around. Regard, regard, yes. And the nice jubba and a beard. He grew a special beard for the occasion. <laughs> huh? He says that, you know, he says it took him three months, you know, to grow that beautiful beard. In other words, a picture of deception. Now, naturally, the Muslim, when he sees that, you know, it hurts him. He says, now look, what are you up to now? Why are you camouflaging yourself? Then he thought he had one on us. You see, in the debate that took place in the Royal Albert Hall, the arrangement was that who speaks first depends on the tossing of the coin. And he won the toss. So when he won the toss, no, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, I won the toss. So I said, let him speak first. I had a reason. My reason was that, look, I don't know what he has got. So whatever he produces, I will be able to refute them. I'll have an hour to refute what he has already said. So I said, let him speak. But for this debate, I had made up my mind that whatever happens, I must speak first. That was the decision we had come to. But now how? If I win the toss, I choose myself to speak first. And if he loses, at the back of my mind, I said, this guy is a rebellious brawler. You know, he's the one who wants to put up a fight. Where there's no fight, he wants to put up a fight. Innocent things, time factor, this, that, who, every little thing, the amount of trouble he gave me in the Royal Albert Hall. Up to the last minute, we couldn't decide on the format. Up to the last minute. Whatever you say, he thinks there's something wrong with that. He's suspicious, you see. So, there must be something wrong. There must be a catch. So he says, I know now, he says, if he wins, I'm sure he wants to take revenge. He said, last time you made me to speak, now I make you to speak. 
Alhamdulillah, actually he played into our hands. See, what is strategy? Our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Hirbu Khid'un, war is strategy. And you have to use strategy when you go into battle with the intellectual or with the gun. Strategy you need. So the strategy I had in mind was that I got, we got so much material that we can throw at him and he will not be able to touch anything. And amazing, it's a miracle. That for one hour and 15 minutes, I have been throwing things at him. You, when you get the tape, you see the tape and you verify it for yourself. Throwing things at him, so come on, answer this, answer this, answer this. The Bible is not the word of God, the Quran is. The Bible is not the word of God, the Quran is. And when his turn came, as if he never heard anything. As if he didn't hear, he was like a punch drunk boxer. You know, he just gets into battle, not knowing, you know, he only knows that the bell has rung. You see, so he gets into, into, into battle. He doesn't know what has really hit him. So, uh, one of the things that hit him the hardest and made the Arabs to react strongest, the Arabs in the audience, was that this man, he believes in a book. And I gave quotations from the book, the Bible, the Holy Bible. In which I'm telling him, I said, one Jewish boy, one Jewish lad, he killed 600 Palestinians with a stick. I demonstrated the stick, I brought a stick with a little nail in front of it. With that little stick, he killed 600 Palestinians. So I'm asking him, you believe that? And he said, yes. One boy, Jewish boy with a little stick, he killed 600 Palestinians. Then another Jew, with the jawbone of a donkey, you know this jawbone, but the donkey's jawbone. With that he killed 1,000 Palestinians. I said, look, won't you want to run away, man? Huh? Look, if he's killing the man, kill one, two, three, four, fifty, hundred, damn it all, you thousand, what are you waiting for, man? And I said, you thousand Palestinians, if you only spat on that guy, he would have suffocated with the spit. Couldn't you do that even? <laughs> and we are like, you believe that? And the guy says, yes, he believes that. Then I says, you know, you Palestinians are so worthless, actually, so worthless. In this book, this book of God, that David, you know, it's Hazrat Dawud He wanted to marry Saul's daughter, Talut. Talut was the king. He wanted to marry his daughter called Michal. So Saul said, look, the dowry for my daughter is 104 skins of the Palestinians. You know what's foreskins? When we circumcise our children, you know the little skin that you throw away? That's called a foreskin. He wanted 100. David, you know, is too generous. So he goes and kills 200 Palestinians, and he takes off their foreskins, 200 dead Palestinians, he takes the foreskins, and he comes and he counts them out in full. The Bible says he counted out in full 200. One, two, three, four. Like you counted out one pound, two pound. How many pounds do you want for your daughter? I said 200 pounds. So he counted out in full 200 foreskins of the Palestinians. You believe that? The guy believes it. <laughs> you know, I said, what's wrong with you people, man? Then, God is very merciful to the Palestinians for some special reason. He has been telling the Jews, kill the Palestinians, men, women and children, spare nothing that lives, nothing that breathes, even donkeys must be killed. This God Almighty, the author of the Bible as he believes, now he says, look, kill them all, men, women and children, even the little ones, boys and girls, male and female, kill them all. But only young women, grown up women, who would be of marriageable age, those women you save for yourself. But you must verify that they are virgins, that no man has known. If you, in testing them out, if you find that they have been second hand, kill them. But if you can prove that they are virgins, that you save for yourself. Now, soldiers in the field, think man, think. Soldiers in the field, Jewish soldiers, Hmm? Killing men, women and children. Now they come across a young girl of 12, they want to verify. So how do you verify? There was no saliva test those days, you know. Today the doctors, they take the saliva of the woman to find out if the woman is pregnant or not. Saliva test. There was no such thing. The only manner in which you can verify is to rape and ravish these women. And so they went through and they discovered that 
32,000 of these Palestinian girls were virgins. How did they test it? You can imagine, left to your imagination. 32,000. And out of the 32,000, the Lord God wants his share. God also wants a share out of those raped and ravished Palestinian girls. And it says, and 30 and 2, 32, was the Lord's share, share of Allah's share. I am asking, what does God do with raped and ravished Palestinian girls? You tell me. You believe that? Of course he believes it. Now, when you believe in things like that, it creates a type of mentality. Cow down that this is your destiny, man. You, you are supposed to be the hewers of wood and the drawers of water. These are your gods. You can do nothing to them. One boy can kill 600. Another Jew, he can kill 1,000. And you people are so cheap in the sight of God. Kill them, kill them, kill them. God's word? He said, yes, it's God's word. So what he does is he writes a book. Once you have that mentality, with that mentality, you write a book. And he's given away the whole of Palestine to the Jews in this book. He's advising the people. In other words, he said, look, man, what are you fighting for? All this Palestine was promised to the Jews. This is these Arabs. He points out, this is a strange that they are not happy that the Jews should have 10,000 square miles. Actually, God had promised them from the Nile to the Euphrates. And in 1982, when they attacked southern Lebanon, he said, look, this is also part of the prophecy. What are you crying about? So now he's very generous to the Palestinian people. He said he, what he opts for is a small state on the West Bank for the Palestinians, small state, with a police force, but no standing army. In other words, a vassal of Israel. Small state, what happened to Gaza? Mm -hmm. He's not worried about Gaza. That's all involved from the Nile to the Euphrates. Give it away. Now, naturally, when the Arab Muslim hears this, and I don't know if there are any Palestinians there, the George Habash, you know, he's supposed to be a Palestinian Christian. I don't know if he's good. When the Arab Muslim hears this, and I don't know if there are any Palestinians there. The George Habash. You know, he's supposed to be a Palestinian Christian. I don't know if his group hears about this guy. That this is a traitor, a quizzling. Naturally, you get worked up. So then he started speaking lies. He started insulting the audience, which is never done. Wallah, you never do that. <laughs> you are wanting to commit suicide. <laughs> Look, you are in confrontation with the whole audience. You can't, I mean, you can't satisfy everybody, but you are on a confrontation course and you're calling people names that you've got no brains, you know, you've got no intelligence, you've got no sense. Shh, unforgivable. For, but that means that it's the arrogance, some type of arrogance that's in him makes him to bleed out. Then I pointed out to the audience that this man had lied. He had lied again and again about the Quran. If you remember, if you have seen that videotape, this videotape, about the debate in the Royal Albert Hall. Is Jesus God? You see this videotape? On that you find at the beginning he appears. He appeared at the first debate that took place in the Royal Albert Hall. At question time he comes forward. We don't know who he is. Very well spoken, speaks good English. And in that immaculate English of his, he says, Mr. Didat, you Muslims believe that Jesus has died. He said, yes. But he said, what have you to say to this? And he quotes the Quran. Okay. I was stunned. I'm thinking he's a Pakistani. Usually the Qadianis quote that verse, usually. And this guy is quoting the Quran, and he says, Wasalamun alayya. You know, in his usual Arabic style. Wasalamun alayya. Yawma ulittu. Wa yawma amutu. Wa yawma ubasuhayya. Which means, he says, he translates. Before Jesus was born, he died and he rose again. Uh, he says, uh, says, peace is on me. The day that I was born, the day that I died, and the day that I shall be raised back to life again. What have I to say to that? The Quran says that he died, and I say he didn't die. The Muslims say he didn't die. Fortunately, fortunately for me, he was playing into my hands. This is Allah's way. I am not an Arabicist. You know, that means I know Arabic. I don't know the Quran as a whole. I don't know the Arabic language. But he is actually playing into my hands. He's throwing a ball straight at me. He's getting caught out. 
I know this verse. So I said, you see, the verse you quoted, وَسَلَامٌ alayya يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ أُوَسَحَيَّ means, so peace is on me, the day that I was born, the day that I die, in the future tense, not the day that I died, and the day that I shall be raised to life again. So, alhamdulillah, the people appreciated and they applauded. That means the man was lying. He lied about the Quran. He is an Arab and he's lying in his translation. Then, during the course of the debate, if you remember, he said, you know, I'd like to urge you to consider that when we say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, we see the Trinity 113 times in the Quran, like the Bible says, Bismillah, Wal Ibn Wa Ruhul Qudus. Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost appear in the Quran 113 times and say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Which he gave the translation as Allah Rahman and Rahim, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> no, look, the, the stupidity to the extent to his arrogance in trying to bamboozle, maybe he was placating, trying to curry favor with these Christians in the audience. He says, you see, I'm an Arab and I can get away with it. So all these are fools and I can do what I like with them. So I said, look, this is not Trinity. Allah is telling us that He is Allah, who is Rahman and who is Rahim. Allah is Rahman and Rahim. There is not Allah and Rahman and Rahim. Your Trinity is in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You know, and the conjunction, and, and, and means three different persons. This is the same Allah who is Rahman and Rahim, and we are given so many attributes of Allah, 99 in the Quran, Allah that He is Allah besides whom there is no other God, Al-Malik, the King, Al-Quddus, the Holy One, As-Salam, the source of peace and perfection, and, and Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar, these are not so many gods, it's the same God with these different attributes. So again he tried to pull a fast one upon the Muslims, he bluffed us. Then he made another lie, he said, you know, even the Quran testifies, that Jesus is the only person who knows the hour of judgment. Jesus is the only one in the Quran in which the Quran says that he knew of the day of judgment, the last day. Again he lied. The Quran says that it will be the sign of the coming of the hour of judgment. That he, not that he knows. He lied about the Quran. Then a bigger and greater lie at one stage in his talk at the debate here in the Royal Albert Hall. He said, Let me challenge you. 75% of the wonderful Quran in my wonderful language of Arabic is from the Bible. And I would urge you to look into the Bible and find out where these sources are. Let me challenge you. Now this is bombastic. The bravado with which he speaks. Let me challenge you, either challenging me or the whole audience. Let me challenge you. 75% of that wonderful Quran in my wonderful language of Arabic is from the Bible. You know what is 75%? Three quarter. Three quarter of this book is from the Bible. Lies, lies, lies. So I exposed him. I said, look, you said three quarter. We don't want 75%. Give me one. Just give me one. One example, one comparison where you say, look, this is now copied from my Bible. In my Bible it says, for example, Ya mu'allimu nuridu an nara min ka'ayatan. When you open the Quran, you see the same thing. Ya mu'allimu nuridu an nara min ka'ayatan. You read the Bible, for ajaba wa kala lahum. You read open the Quran, for ajaba wa kala lahum. Jilun shirirun wa fasikun. Open the Quran, jilun shirir. That is copying. This is copying. This is cribbing. This is plagiarism. One verse. Just produce one verse. And I put the Quran, the Arabic Bible, I put one side and I put the Arabic Quran. So while I'm telling, I said, look, you remember you challenged me? Can you do that? He said, yes. N now? He wants to get up there and then. I said, no, wait a minute. You'll have your turn. You'll have your turn. He had his turn. He left the Quran and the Bible. He didn't touch it. But he did do something. And the audience didn't catch the joke. 
Even it was difficult for me to catch what was going on. You see, there was something wrong in his delivery. He was speaking at 100 miles an hour. And then he was reading. He was not speaking. He was actually reading. And he had so the preparation he had made, he wanted to read the whole thing through. Whether you understand or you don't understand, that means he did the job. He wanted to complete his job, read it all through. So while he was reading, something did sound like the Quran. I don't know those of you who were there, you'll remember. He had this book. This book with him, this green book. This is a new production of the Arab Christians. What's the title, Ya Sheikh? It's hard for me to read. Seerat al-Masih. Seerat al-Masih. Right. Fasih Arabi. This is Seerat al-Masih. You know, this Seerat in the life of Jesus, you know, in the Fasih, in the eloquent Arabic. So he read from here, a chapter here, uh, just a few lines if you read. This is what he read. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. This one here. That's right. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله حقا فآمنوا بي ولا تخافوا إن لكم عند الله جنات نزلا. Right, right. So you see now what's happening. This is in the Fasih Balik Arabic. This they have now produced this as a challenge to the Quran. 